Okay guys, here we go in, in video two of chapter one. Um, we pick up with a discussion about two important laws. And if you've done the chapter reading, uh, you'll recall there's, there's a video, a TED Ed video in there about the difference between a law and a theory. And that distinction is really important. So make sure that you take a look at that video if you haven't already done so. Okay, so our story starts with Einstein back in 1905. He believed, he pointed out the idea that energy and matter are really just two different forms of the same thing. So if you can imagine for a minute taking a, a big ball of light or heat, some sort of energy, and squishing it down until you get to the size of a nucleus, until you get to the density of a nucleus. And as we know from our video in the last segment, um, the density of a nucleus would be if we took six billion cars and smash them all into a one foot box. So it's really dense. So if you took all that energy and you smashed it down to the size of a nucleus and the density of a nucleus, then you would have an atom. And so Einstein said basically that atoms and energy are converted between each other. That's what his famous equation um, that, that I think most people know, E equals mc squared means. So energy is the big E and C is, is the speed of light and m is mass. So energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Okay, so what that, what that really means for us is that mass has to be conserved. So in the beginning of a reaction and the end of an of a reaction, it means that you basically have the same number of atoms before and after you do something. Okay. The law of conservation of energy is kind of the same statement, but for energy. So you have the same amount of energy before and after you finish things. Sometimes a particular chemical reaction gives off energy. That means the air around it and the container that it's in has to absorb it. So that's going to feel hot if you touch the container. It's going to be hot. It's absorbing energy from the reaction. So that's, uh, that's a sort of statement of the law of conservation of energy. Okay, so now there are four states of matter. We're only really going to study three of them, but they're pretty familiar to us already, at least in everyday life. So here at the top left uh, picture, we have a cherub made out of ice. So ice is a solid. And we know that a solid sort of retains its shape. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't suddenly become an ice sculpture made into a swan. It's going to stay a cherub because it's a solid. The next one here, the next picture is liquid water. So our next state of matter is liquid. Now, the liquid does change its shape. I could pour it into a square container or a round container, and that's the shape that it would have. Okay. Um, but it doesn't change volume, as it turns out. Water and it stays kind of the same. So if I take a shot glass of water and I pour it into a pitcher, like a gallon pitcher, it doesn't suddenly become a gallon of water. And that's what we mean when volume, when we say volume stays the same. Here is a picture of water in the gas phase. Gas phase, we call it water vapor or clouds, right? So clouds are made out of water. Um, they're just water that doesn't have a particular shape or a particular volume, so it's a gas. And finally, this box, this is really cool. This is called plasma. Not the kind that's in your blood. Plasma, as a state of matter, is just a gas that you've taken and, and you run electricity through it. And so when it does that, you, it glows. And you've seen plasma before, if you've ever been into a restaurant. Uh, neon signs are made out of plasmas. Okay, so these states are different because some of them have a particular shape and some of them don't. Some of them have a particular volume and, and others can take on whatever volume you allow them to have. Okay, 
whatever volume the, sh the sort of the container has. I don't know why that got messed up like that. Okay, you get the idea. Um, these things are all the same in one crucial way. They're all the same because they're all water. So they're all different forms of the compound water, which means they're all made out of matter. Okay, so um, it's the same chemical. Oh my goodness, I can't write on this computer. So it's the same chemical which is a kind of matter, okay? So that's why they're the same. All right, so for this one, this, this link here will lead us to the FET simulation that I showed you in class the other day. If you wanna get on there and play with that, you can do that by clicking that link and you can explore the characteristics of solids, liquids, and gases on your own. Again, we're not gonna talk about plasma very much, uh, in this semester, but I wanted you to be aware that it is a state of matter, um, but it's hard to study in the lab, so we're not going to talk too much about it. Okay, so this slide is our summary of the properties that we observed both with our our demo in class when I, I took the, the syringe and smashed some air into a smaller volume, so gases are compressible, air is a gas. Um, I tried to compress the liquid and that didn't even work at all, so I didn't even bother to try and compress a solid because solids are even more structured than liquids are, so if I can't, if I can't squash, squash a liquid, I'm probably not going to be able to squish a solid either. And then we noted that the particles in the gas phase were moving around with a lot of energy, so they have high energy. Liquids have pretty high energy, but not as high. The gas molecule zooms around a lot more. Solids are the lowest energy state. Okay, and if you remember, we figured out that there's basically three types of motion. Solids have only one type. It's called vibrational motion. That means that they stay in their solid structure and they just kind of sit there and shake. Okay, liquids have that as well, and so do gases. So every kind of matter vibrates. Liquids also have rotational motion, which means they kind of spin around in circles and they spin around each other. Okay, so that's rotational motion. Gases also rotate. Finally, gases, in addition to vibrational and rotational, they also have one more called translational motion. Gases zoom around the container and bounce off each other and the walls all the time. So when you're traveling from point A to point B, that's translational motion. So gases do that. Okay. So here we go. Um, you can pick more than one choice here on your top hat. Make sure you answer this question again because you do get points for that. Okay. Um, there's a series of of three regular questions, three multiple choice questions. And then a fourth question here where I want you to click on the right hand side of the picture and drag the choice so that you can arrange from lowest energy to the highest. So lowest goes on the top and highest energy goes on the bottom. All right, so once you do that, I want you to look at this picture. This is a demonstration of two different kinds of solids. One of them is crystalline, that's the bottom one. It looks like these nice geometric shapes in the picture. If you get a magnifying glass and you go look at some sugar or some salt from your house, then you'll see that they have these nice geometric shapes. That's called a crystalline solid. Okay, So that's the one we looked at in the FET simulation in class. Other solids don't have a rigid arrangement like that. So they don't have a repeating pattern in them. We call so solids without a repeating pattern amorphous. And there's a lot of things that you touch on a daily basis that are amorphous solids. Um, for example, glass. Okay, so in the picture on the right-hand side here, you see that the, the glass has wavy lines in it. Okay, the image we're seeing through the glass is not clear. 
And the reason for that is these windows are really old. And uh, so what happens is because glass has this amorphous arrangement, this random arrangement, over a long period of time, gravity drags down these atoms. Okay, and so if you go to a really old building and you find an original window, you'll, you'll notice that the top of the window up here is thinner than the bottom of the window pane. And that's because gravity pulls these atoms down over time. And that pulling motion creates kind of the waviness of old windows. Okay, so that's an amorphous solid. Now, you've actually touched other amorphous solids today if you have touched a phone or an iPad or a tablet or a TV screen. Anything with an LCD screen that stands for uh, liquid crystal display. So when they say liquid crystal, what that means is it's an amorphous solid. The crystals are not in a nice rigid pattern. And the fact that they're not in a nice rigid pattern means that you can move them around with your finger. And that's one way that touch screens sense uh, when things have been moved on the screen. And so they respond by displaying different pictures for you. All right, so we're going to pick up with mixing different compounds together in our next video.